the Bible to the cross from the cross. Every Bible story has three components. First, God's law. Second, God's compassion. Third, God's miracle. Opening your Bible opens miracles. The Bible as one story is holy enough in our lives. Day 229, 1 Chronicles 21-22, David's sin and repentance. David, who took a census as an attempt to count his greatness, soon realized his mistake and immediately repented by kneeling down before God. First point, despite Joab's advice against it, David still carried out census. The act of David taking census became a huge deal causing God's anger to burn. This census was very different compared to the census taken after Exodus. The objective of a census after Exodus was in order to count the number of people who were able to go to battle and also to organize the logistics for a kingdom of priests, as well as for land distribution in Canaan. But David's census started from a place of arrogance, whereby David wanted to see his achievements. When David ordered the census, Joab advised against it, but David went to force with it nevertheless. The process and the consequences of a census was as follows. Firstly, Joab counted the people for 9 months and 20 days. According to Joab's account, excluding the tribes of Levi and Benjamin, those who were able to fight in war were 1,570,000. This figure shows how extensively Israel grew. But this did not please God in the slightest, and God declared punishment on David. David realized what he did and repented immediately. Second point. Chronicles records how after the census, God declared punishment on Israel and how David and the elders repented. When David commanded to take a census, God sent the prophet Gath to tell David of the three options of punishment for his sin. The first option was three years of famine. In 2 Samuel, the famine proposed was seven years. The second option was being chased by the enemy for three months. The third was a plague for three days. When 70,000 people of Israel died due to David's sin, David knelt down and thoroughly repented. When David and the elders of Israel came to repent, God forgave David and allowed him to make an offering. The place where David was ordered by God to make an offering was the same place Abraham had offered his son Isaac a thousand years ago. Later on, this ground became the ground for the Jerusalem temple. Third point, God answered David's offering. The place God told David to make the offering was Mount Moriah, where Abraham offered Isaac to God a thousand years ago. During the time of David, this land was occupied, but David spent a substantial amount of money to purchase the land in order to make an offering to God. The sum David paid was recorded in 2 Samuel to have been 50 pieces of silver and 1 Chronicles to have been 600 pieces of gold. David made an offering to God, and God answered through his fire. David thereafter continuously returned here to make an offering to God. Until then, David made an offering in Gibeon, but after the instant of census, David feared God all the more, and returned to this place to offer to God. Fourth point, after making an offering to God, David called that place God's temple. After the instant of a census, David pulled himself together and started to prepare for the temple. David honestly wanted the temple to be God's temple. 
Here we can reflect on how Jacob called Bethel God's house. David not only made material preparations, but he also prepared people. The reasons why David put so much effort into the preparation for the temple can be found in 1 Chronicles 22 verse 5. For the preparation of the temple, David brought in even foreign people. This was because the Lord's temple was to be for all nations. Fifth point, David passed on the architectural design of the temple and the materials he prepared to Solomon. David prepared both the materials and the people needed for the temple. He also put his son Solomon as the person in charge. David told Solomon to keep God's laws and decrees. He also told Solomon to be strong and courageous. He told Solomon to prepare more rather than only using his father's preparations. David asked Solomon and all the leaders of Israel to put their heart into the temple construction. I am thrilled that you have downloaded the Tondok app. The Tondok app is not like any other app in the world today as well as in the body of Christ today. Dr. Biyongo Zhou has devoted his entire life to teaching men and women like yourself to understand the entirety of the Word of God as a masterful and beautiful story from Genesis to Revelation. Dr. Zhou is a sought after speaker worldwide. He's a cutting edge pastor and leader. He is a renowned theologian and a prolific writer. And you're going to be equipped and energized like never before to understand and apply the Word of God into your life. Again, thank you for downloading the Tondok app.